Welcome to Duluth First United Methodist Church. We are located in Gwinnett County, a half mile east of historic downtown Duluth. We are a congregation that believes in relationships. Quite simply, we seek to nurture our relationship with God and with others through weekly worship, small groups, and fellowship. Each Sunday, we offer traditional worship in the sanctuary at 8.30 and 11 a.m. and a contemporary service in Hinton Hall at 11 a.m. Here at Duluth First UMC, all are welcome, whether it is in our weekday preschool, children's ministries, youth groups, adult groups, or our mission ministries, we invite you to find your place. We would truly love to have you here with us. What a way to start off the morning. Eh? 
Good morning. It's so good to see you all. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Happy birthday to the church. And we're so excited to be here. And it looks like many of you got the, the word that you're invited to wear red today. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I want to call your attention to a few announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, coming up uh, on the 20th and 21st, we have a new um, set of classes that will be offered by Reverend Dr. C. Quay Fuino and Reverend Beth Brown Sugart. These are classes on the Psalms, and there'll be a different Psalm taught each, um, each of the weeks that are listed. Uh, the information about that is in your Sunday supplement. Our United Women of Faith have been uh, collecting items for tornado buckets. And uh, there we go. <laughs> And uh, the information about that is also in your Sunday supplement, including um, all of the items that they uh, need for these buckets. So if you're able to provide uh, for that, uh, please, please check that out. And Vacation Bible School, as we've mentioned, is coming up very soon, and we are in uh, need of volunteers. So if you have some time the week of June 12th through 16th, even if it's just one of those days, we'd love, uh, love your help to guide our children from place to place. Uh, we have plenty of volunteers for the areas. We just need ones who make sure they get uh, to each place uh, safe, um, safe and sound. This weekend is Memorial Day, and we remember all those who have, have served and made the ultimate sacrifice that we might have the freedoms that we enjoy today. We pray for the families who still mourn the loss of loved ones. And before we begin our worship today, I invite you to pray in silence and give thanks for, for these who have served and for their families. Amen. Our call to worship is, on, is in your order of worship. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join together in that. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creation. You sent forth your spirit, and they were created. And so you renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. Today's scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just, because, just doing it because everyone else did it. 
It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. Uh, for instance, uh, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say Jesus is master without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out elsewhere, but they originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. All these things have a common origin that are handed out one by one by the Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. The Word of God for the people of God. Good morning. You know, I think it's kind of neat that, um, that Memorial Day and Pentecost happen to be on the same time this year because it does allow us to look back over time and to see all of the magnificent things that have been done by great people. First, we have what the disciples did at Pentecost. And then we have what all of those that we have loved over time have done for us since early, early, early in this country's life. And they're still doing it, just like you're still doing exactly what the disciples did. You're still telling others about the God and God's Spirit and God's son. Joel told me yesterday that, that he really enjoyed reading this scripture, and it is one that I really enjoy too. It's enjoyable because it tells you so much about God and God's spirit. We always talk about Jesus all the time, and we talk about God all the time, but seldom do we really take the time to nourish and express and think about what the Holy Spirit that is coming from God actually does in each of us. And so he starts to say, I want to talk about you, the various ways that God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. Not just one way, but a lot of different ways. When we're little, there are things that we do simply because someone else is doing it. And that's okay. That's how you learn. If you watch the kids when they're in toddlers and the twos and the threes and all of that, you see one of them pick up something and do it, and then the other one wants to go pick it up and try it too. They learn to put Legos together. They learn to color, sometimes everywhere. And then there'll be that one child that can color in the lines. They can stay in there, and then the next one looks at it and it's like, well, that looks pretty cool, let me try to do that. When they learn to walk, when they learn to run, when they learn to play ball and kick a ball and hop, all of those things are because they watch someone else do it. But then as we get older, <clears throat> we have to be careful. We have to make sure that the things that we are choosing to do, that we're not choosing to do, simply because the other one does it. When my kids were young, they'd come home and they'd say, I want to go here and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I'd say, I, I, don't really, I don't really think that's something that we should do. I don't think that that's what I would choose for you to do. But mom, mom, everyone else is doing it. And it's like, oh, I don't want to be the last one. I don't want to be the only one that tells my child they can't do something. So if you'll just have all of their moms call me and let me know why they're doing it, then I'll reconsider it. Never got a call. Never got a call. Which tells me that maybe, one, everyone else wasn't doing it, 
And maybe everyone else's mom should have called all of the moms to say, is this the right thing for our children to be doing? Funny how that's already in the scriptures, isn't it? Knowing what you're doing, never knowing what you're doing, just doing it because everybody else did it. Hmm. Paul says it's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence. You see, when you get down to it, there are all of these incredibly wonderful gifts, gifts of God's Spirit that God places in each of us. But to use those spirits, we have to make the same kind of decision in life that God made when his great decision said, I'm putting this gift in each of you. And sometimes we look at other people and we really, really say, you know, I appreciate the gift I got, but could I have that one over there? You heard two gifts this morning. You heard two beautiful gifts this morning. I don't have that gift. Do I wish I did? Absolutely. I've always wanted to play the piano well. I can't do it. My rhythm is off. I can't remember things. I enjoy doing it for myself, but nobody else wants to hear what I play. And when I played the clarinet, it was really good that I was in the band because there were plenty of other sounds around me to drown me out when I didn't play the right notes. I would love to be able to do beautiful woodworking like he can do. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. But I know that if I started putting things on a lathe and turning them and turning them pretty soon, there would either be a hunk or there would be nothing left but the dust because I would go too far. They are gifts and we, and we each have them. I know that God placed certain gifts in me. And I know that over time, those gifts have changed, those gifts have grown, those gifts have been used in other ways. But I have always allowed myself to say, okay, God, what is it that you would desire me to do with this great gift? We have to learn to use the gifts that we have. And I think it's really ironic that, that Paul says, we have to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. Do we do that often? Do you sit back and, and just spend a few moments with God and say, I thank you for this gift. Now, what is it that you would like me to do with it? Do you want me to use it for something small? Or do you want me to use it for something very, very big? All of these people throughout history have one way or another used their gifts. It may be something that was simply the trust to be able to do and be there for other people. The trust that we have placed in them to do the right thing over time the trust that we have placed in them to lead us or to do whatever it is that we need done. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. And the variety is wonderful. Wise counsel. Can you think of the people in your life over the years that have provided wise counsel to you and now you in your time are providing wise counsel to others. This last week was filled with graduations. The last couple of weeks, actually, and you've got some that are graduating and going out into the world because their lives have done the learning and the, and the knowledge that they've gained as they've gone through high school and then college, and now it's time to use what they've learned. And then there are those who are so excited for this next step in their lives, our high school graduates. You saw some of them last week. And they're, they're embarking on something new, but they're not finished. You know what? None of us are finished. None of us will ever be finished. There will always be something more 
something more to learn, some gift to open up. Right now, they're opening up simple gifts, things that will help them through their lives. They were given blankets. Those blankets aren't just to keep them warm. Those blankets are to be a reminder that this church cared about them and gave them something. When those disciples showed up on Pentecost, the people didn't around them did not know what to expect. They'd heard so much over time about a man called Jesus. And yet, that's not exactly what they talked about. What they talked about was the opportunity to use what you have to do even more for the world. And one of the gifts that those disciples got was a way of speaking that everyone could understand. For some, it was in their own language. For some, they heard something different in their own language, just like we do. You might not even know when you go someplace if they're speaking a different language, what they're saying, until they get to a point where they say something because the rhythm and the speech is exactly what you know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know exactly what they're saying, and in your own mind, you can translate it. But you have to distinguish between what you know and what you don't know. You have to look at what your gifts are and don't hide them. Part of the reason that Pentecost was like flames was because there was so much excitement. And if you go back to those scriptures, you see how many people came to the Lord that day. How many people realized just exactly who God was and that the Spirit of God was there. Remember that on Pentecost, Christ has already ascended. Jesus wasn't there with the disciples. They were there. And so Paul talks to these Corinthians and says, I want you to know that all of these things that you have received, all of these gifts, all of these gifts have a common origin, but they're handed out one by one by the Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. Don't you wonder sometimes when that gift was placed in you? Was it there before you were born, just waiting to, to open up? Or was it placed in you at some point in your life when God said, you know what? I think that I can take this person and put this gift in them and that it will grow and it will do exactly what I need because this is what I need right now. And maybe that's what happens to you when, when you hear about one of our ministries coming about in the church, like Vacation Bible School. You might be sitting there and saying, I don't really want to be with all those little children. They've got snotty noses, dirty hands. I know they're going to be sticky from eating the snacks. But maybe if I can just lead them someplace, just be in front of them and get them from one place to the next, I could do that. And if you feel that nudge, that's exactly what's happening. God is taking a gift and placing it in you right now to use for right now. You don't ever know what's going to happen in the excitement of waking up every morning to think, okay, what is today going to bring? Am I going to use the gifts that I already have or is God going to open up something new? Is God going to allow me to find a new place in the world, in the church, in my life, in my family? Some things you don't start, 
until you don't have time to do the other thing. How many people at retirement start a whole new business in their life because they don't get bogged down by the other? I think my time for ministry began when I left one place and moved to another because then all of the things that I was tied up with before could be left back there and there was new space to open up to see who God was in a different way. And it began with disciple Bible study and it grew from there until finally I was close enough and filled enough for God to say, okay, I have a new gift for you. I have a new decision to make in your life. And so if you make that decision, then you will find new gifts along the way. And I think the greatest gift that I have found along this whole ministry journey is the gift of love. Love for people, love from people. Love for God's world. Love for looking at the various ways that God uses so many people to accomplish exactly what God needs to accomplish. And I look at others in this church who have found ways to use new gifts. Joel did not start out as an incredible sound person. But now he is. But the other gift that he is using is to help other people like Tabitha up there today to become incredible sound people. And you know what they use their real gift for? It's not just about the sound. It's not just about the knobs and the listening. It's about giving that gift to you so that you can hear what happens up here. When So Young learned to play the piano, I'm not sure that she knew at that time how wonderful it would be and what a gift her gift would be to share with others. The same thing with Joseph. He loves his clarinet, and you can tell when he plays that it gives him joy. But I'm not sure that the joy that he feels is near the joy that we feel when we hear you play. That's the gift that you have too. You all walk in here on Sunday morning. You have your own little time out there. And then you come in here and you get in your little clumps. And you find out and you share and you love each other. You are using the gift of joy at being here to share with each other. You are using your own gifts to invite people to come on in and to keep coming back. And yes, you sit in the same places. That's wonderful because you know who's missing. What's really funny is you park in the same places too. And so we know who's here and who's not here when I drive by. That's fine. That's how we know who you are. That's how we know to care about you and to allow the love to come through. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. And the when may not be here yet. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace <clears throat> with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. 
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us share the love and peace of Christ with one another. church that have a heart on them and they are called automatic external defibrillators that's a really big word but what it really is is a life-saving device it's a portable electronic device that automatically diagnoses life-threatening heart problems and is able to treat them through defibrillation and we have three of them there's one on the first floor of the Sheldon Family Life Center, right near the steps. There's one near the library on the second floor. And there's one outside the gathering area by the outside of the sanctuary. So if it's needed, this church is ready. We hope it's never needed. It would nice, be nice if it just grew dust. But if it is, we have one. And that's one of the things that the money that you give, the offering that you provide, purchased for this church. It's amazing. It's amazing how many things happen just because you put your offering to good work. So thank you. Thank you very much. As the ushers come down, let us pray. For the offering that you give, for the AEDs, and so many other things, we give you thanks, Lord. We invite you to look at your hearts and to see what it is that God's calling you to do, not only with your lives, and, but with your gifts, gifts that are given with great joy and great love, gifts that are given because of promises that we've made to make this church the church that can call others to be disciples. Amen.
dark deep and far off land. And I am thine, I rest in thee. Great Spirit, come and rest in me. Please join me in the great thanksgiving which is printed in your order of worship. Great God of heaven and earth, spirit which existed before time began, we give you thanks for all the blessings you have given us, the world, the church, our families and friends, food and shelter, work and play. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come now and be among us just as Jesus Christ came and dwelt among us. We remember how Jesus taught and healed, gathered disciples and ate with sinners. Jesus promised us that he would send us an advocate, the spirit of truth, that we might know God's love for us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. After Jesus was resurrected from the dead, when he was at table with the disciples from the road to Emmaus, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. That same hour, the disciples returned to Jerusalem and told what had happened on the road, how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come. Fill this bread and cup with your presence, Holy Spirit, that we may know Christ's presence and God's love as we partake of this meal. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us and this church with your energy and power that we might spread the good news of God's forgiving love to all the world. Come, Holy Spirit. And with the Father and the Son, we will give you all the praise and glory forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's children, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Those who are assisting this morning would come forward.
Please join me in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our sending hymn is, whoop, where is it? There it is, 393, Spirit of the Living God. And I invite any of you who would like to make this church your church home by profession of faith, transfer of membership from another denomination or another church to come forward and just let us be a part of this body of Christ. Amen. <coughs> One of the greatest decisions that God made was to place a gift in each of you, a gift that God expected you to use along with the Holy Spirit to do God's work in the world. So take that gift this week and let it shine and let it go forth and let it grow so that you too can be filled with the Spirit of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you go in peace.